I see. Uh, less, okay. Mm. So you're saying we gotta go by method by methods over means. I can't figure out how, but it's better not to kill in order to win. This is not to win. I'm a magus. If necessary, I will kill. However, as a human being, there are minimum standards that should be observed. Oh. Ah. That's sort of... How do I put it? He sounds unenthusiastic. The servant apathetically breathes out and... Lady, how about using a command spell? Say something like, don't disobey me. Because if you don't, I think I might kill you first. I gulp. He is serious. He doesn't care about what would happen next. The rule of cooperating with a master for his own protection doesn't apply to him. The bastard is seriously aiming for my throat. The servant told me to use a command spell to stop him. Three absolute rights of order that a master has. Powerful spells given by the Holy Grail. A master's trump card that can only be used three times, but ensures that any command is followed. Any with an asterisk next to it. For that reason, I answer him immediately. I refuse. I have never heard of a master being ordered by a dog. Anyone who gets killed by their own dog does not deserve to be called its master. You are my servant. I am the one that tells you how to move and when you march off to die. I forced back his bloodlust with my own. No matter what, if I used a command spell for something as frivolous as this, I had no future in this war. Hurren! Ah. Mm, that was weird. I clench my right fist and start carving runes into the floor with my heel, only to be able to, uh, uh, intercept an assault at any time. To be able to intercept an assault at any time. I see. Okay. Let me try having a change of heart. Okay. I'm your servant. Now listen to my owner. The servant gave in easily. It's, how should I put it? Anticlimactic? And my heart was beating in excitement at the feeling that a battle was going to break out. So I could learn how powerful servants were. What now? You still got a problem? N no, but... Do you really understand what I said? Yeah, keep the deaths to a minimum, right? That's your policy. I got it. Anything else? You got something else to say? There are many things I want to say in detail, but I have nothing else to say regarding a general plan. The rest guy can do by giving orders depending on the situation. Okay then, let's go. I've seriously gotten sick of being here. The servant prods me to go out. I'm still physically unstable, but I am curious about what is going on outside. And anyway, after sleeping for such a long time, I want to move around freely a bit. I understand. I will make more detailed modifications to our strategy depending on what we encounter. I regain myself. For the time being, I'll leave... Rock behind? Oh, right. There are limits to that sword, and I can't use it fully in my current state. After I locate the other masters, I can think about who to use it on. But I've got to say this, lady. Keeps the deaths to a minimum, huh? <laughs> I like the sound of that. Yeah. It'd be great if I could do that. The servant repeats cheerfully. If you still have complaints, say them. If you have any opinions about my strategy, let's settle it here. I told you I get the point. I'm not gonna pick a fight with you yet since you're so scary. But look, Master, that's not gonna be possible. All this stuff about killing people or getting bystanders involved is beside the point. This town ain't gonna last longer than four days. No matter how hard you try. No longer than four days? What 
did you say? You'll understand when you step outside. What you're getting worked up over stopped mattering a long time ago. The humans living here have been getting wiped out by these mysterious things pouring out daily. Mysterious things? Ridiculous. You're just saying nonsense because my memory is... You'll understand when you step outside. Seeing is believing. The servant stifles his laughter. As I stand bewildered, the black shadow takes my hand and starts walking. Come, let's continue the Holy Grail War. Lizette Fraga McRemitz. To find your wish. This time for sure. <laughs> your strategy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> when did I get this ocarina? This house was built on top of a hill. It lies hidden within a forest, separated from any human habitation. No! Look, I've been eating this cake for like the last hour. Bite me. It's good cookie cake. My head aches. I had thought that breathing the outside air would clear myself, more or less. But instead, the cold night air only clouds my thoughts further. What's wrong, master? Still too early for you to get out? The servant pokes fun at me. I shake my head and keep going. My mind is still sluggish. The bright moonlight seems to be the uh, source of my disorientation. Uh, yeah, bright. Uh, let me tell you about that. It's quiet. Of course, it's past 2 a.m., but the city is abnormally, abnormally silent, even for this time. It silently resembles my own hometown. The port town I spent my childhood in. At night, the tide would come into the town and people would shut themselves in their houses as if they were afraid. I was on a diet? <laughs> when did that happen? The empty city was almost like a ship sunk at the bottom of the ocean, prompting a younger me to want to run away from that place. I must have felt that everybody would have forgotten that I existed if I'd stayed like that at the bottom of the ocean. I couldn't help thinking about the old gods that nobody remembered anymore, sharing the same cursed fate. And now Fuyuki is being submerged into the ocean depths too. The atmosphere is different from the one I remember. It is too quiet. It might as well be an abandoned city. Regardless, only the, present, only the presence of life is evident. I could feel almost countless numbers of creatures breathing. Surrounding me is an aura that I have never felt before. Mysterious things is what my servant said. I don't want to admit it, but it seems that there is credibility to what he says. Oh? Wonder what's that? We've been walking for some two hours. The servant stops in his tracks and is now gazing at a particular residence. Wow, I've been around this area before, but to think there was still someone who didn't get the hint to leave. He speaks with an impressed tone. The house he is looking at is nothing more than a regular building. If there is anything that distinguishes it from the other residents, it is the one fact that the lights are on. Stay here. You are still not ready, right? I'll go take a fur. I'll go take a look first. The servant starts walking towards it on his own accord. I try to chase after him. Pathe pathetically, I am thrown off by the moonlight. Memories, all alone in the moonlight. I've got to be honest here. I can't speak for the other servants, but see me? I didn't feel like doing this from the get-go. High level magic. The summoning of beings purified into the level of legends and giving a form to them to make them familiars. That's what servants are. Not something so cheap as just borrowing a piece of the power of the heroic spirits, no. It's actually a projection of the guy himself. A resurrection just for the Holy Grail War. A clone with a short lifespan. A guardian of humanity reborn into the modern era. 
Sounds nice and dandy. Autonomous weapons are pretty convenient, right? Except replicating even what's on the inside is gonna... going a little too far, don't you think? A familiar being able to think doesn't do anyone any good. And that goes double for servants. Suppose it's a familiar far more powerful than its master. Now let's say it can think for itself. There's no reason why it won't revolt. I was lucky enough to be summoned by a master that was my type of woman. Personally, I'm satisfied with her, but it looks like I'm going to be doing some disobeying. Why? Well, why not? I might not have any complaints about the boss, but I've got a hell of a lot to say about society. I feel like shit. Like I was left hanging in the morgue. Back when I was alive, the world was still lively. Nowadays, it's old and dying. Got a few hundred million years left before it kicks the bucket. And it's too late to do anything about it. Being one of those fellows that knew what she was like back in the old days, it wouldn't be right not to be a little angry about her current predicament and all. Of course, it was pretty obvious that she'd be clean dry one of these days, but damn, that was fast. Now, there's a part of me that's gotta hate my own species for that filthiness. But another part of me wants to pat them on the back at the same time. The power of humanity is incredible. Oh, how morals have come and gone in the blink of an eye. Makes me wonder just how many new generations of humanity have been born and how many have been wiped out. Given how fast they are, it's too bad how they haven't come up with a kind of evolution that's environmentally friendly. I gotta hand it to them, hominids. They sure did a great job at amplifying a ready-made system instead of finding a new kind of cycle. But that means there's no future ahead, so if they can buy a little more time, it'd be nice if they'd come up with some kind of improvement and keep going. They've already gone to all the trouble of destroying this much. Where do we want to go? Why have we exhausted the land? Was this good? Was this bad? I want results that anyone can understand. Even if the answer is that it was a failure, I don't mind one bit. Uh -huh. Oh man. I've really got to wonder what the others are thinking. Those of heroic spirit status must have feelings of animosity towards this era. Then again, heroic spirits are supposed to be on humanity's side. So that would mean they'd approve of whatever results humanity brings about. Just like how I did the opposite of that. Let's say there was this godlike absolute being as a force of good. And let's say he was summoned here in this day and age. Now what, now what would he do? Would he approve of it? Would he act to protect us? If he approves, we face extinction. If he protects us, he'll watch on. A sane heroic spirit would choose the latter. One with a few screw loose would happily lend a hand and another with only one screw loose. Screw left would get excited at making the world a better place. Something like, I'm gonna save the world. Wow. I don't ever want to meet that kind of guy, let alone fight him. Sure. Ugh. Now, as for me, there's only one thing I can do either way. And maybe a heroic spirit, but I'm not that strong. Take a look at all the legends in the world, and you still won't find anybody weaker than me. Yay, I'm number one. You're damn lucky, master. Can't get any lower than this. Easy to make up a battle plan, since all there is to do is to think about how to take on the strong. I don't want to think about it, but there's a good chance that lady's stronger than me in pure fighting ability. Heroic spirit getting his ass kicked by a human. <laughs> oh boy, I want to disappear. Yeah, I really can't agree with that lady. Don't cause any deaths. That's what she said. That's the way to go, Milady Magus of the House of Whatever. Can't expect a finer strategy that reeks of sheltered girl on, horror, on honor roll. Fitting sense of pure humanity for a master. But hey, 
I can't do that. All I can do is kill. Honestly, a bloodless victory is a pain in the ass. I'm already the weakest. I'm not gonna be winning if I'm a goody two-shoes. This thing does have war in the name, so we ought to be relying on the slaughter techniques that man had so painstakingly developed. Servants are one thing, but masters are humans. It'd be way easier to take them out with mines and explosions like the last time. Well, times have changed. Last time things were a lot more chaotic, weren't they? Life was cheaper back then, but now... This time things are different. The Mages Association is watching oh so painstakingly close. Plus the system of public safety that modern man has created is not too shabby. If I run wild, the other masters will figure out where Bazette is. Now I don't mind finishing off a horde of people nice and fast, but consecutive fighting on consecutive nights is going to exhaust me, so I want to avoid that. On that point, the part of Bazette's strategy about not going overboard is fine with me. So I'll try my best to follow the master's plan like a good servant would. Well then... With that out of the way, let's turn back to what we have now. Wait, what are you going to do? Ignoring my hesitant master's voice, I'm heading to the house. I don't have to bother checking. The fact that the lights are on means there are live humans inside. Unfortunately, I don't have any human or heat detecting abilities. My servant skills can be summed up as... Nothing. But that's okay. That's what's inside here is human. I dematerialize myself and pass through the front door. I manifest my weapon and go towards the people in the living room. Let's finish this fast and cruel like always. Now, for all I know, there could be some accident like the strongest ultra humanoid in all of human history is inside and has powers that surpass a heroic spirit. No problem whatsoever. I may be the weakest, but I can defeat the most powerful human being. Why? Because... It's not something to brag about, but... When it comes down to dealing with humans, I'm the strongest. Blood splashes up in the air. The inhabitants are dead. One middle-aged man, two boys, one granny, one old man holding a blood-stained knife. Oh. He's still alive. What the hell? What a letdown. By the time I broke in, it was already over. His breath is ragged and heavy. The mad culprit who massacred those four. He doesn't pay any attention to me. Probably because he wants to take out the last geezer. <laughs> the geezer backed himself up, the, up to the wall and is desperately shaking his head. The murder scene and method are pretty grisly to look at. The bodies are ravaged beyond recognition. Blood, flesh, and entrails are splendidly scattered about. The choking stench of life, a living space splattered here and there. The end roll for the Brady Bunch. Tch. <laughs> Damn clean for a murder scene. Not one little flaw. After all, it was murder for murder's sake. No robbing, no raping, no hungering. Not one bit of that here. S somebody help! I'll save him since he asked. Since it was a surprise blow from behind, the murderer is killed easily. After that, I back to my regular job. He seems nice. By the time I ran into that house, it was all over. How could you? There are five corpses in the living room. I'm able to tell by what appears to be five heads severed from the nose. It is a slaughter scene so grotesque that I could not have determined how many there are through any other means. Sorry about settling things before you got here. The servant says while standing idly in a pool of flesh, fresh blood. In the servant's clenched hand is a wrapped dagger. A form that seems to be a mix of the fangs and claws of a beast. It is meant to be gripped. Is it meant to be gripped backhanded? 
I have never seen a weapon that looks so difficult to use. So that weapon is his noble phantasm. His symbol is a heroic spirit? Now don't look at me like that. How about it? Want me to give you the details? There is no need. That weapon and the wounds of those bodies match well enough. The shadow laughs in agreement. There is no need to investigate any further. This situation told me that the cause of this tragedy was the servant. I have one question. Why did you kill them? Why well, ask why? I did it for you. I was just looking for the jackpot. Looking one by one's not different at all as killing them one by one. The point is to make sure there are no witnesses, right? Right. So if we keep wiping them out like this, we'll run into a master eventually. You. This guy. He hadn't listened to anything I said. I was prepared to accept some sacrifices once I went into battle. I am a magus and am no different from a murderer. However, still, I never desired this kind of meaningless sacrifice. Do you enjoy killing people? Huh? Don't be dumb! It's not, like I do, it's not like I like doing this. I'm doing the best I can for what you wanted me to do. Now look, just because I look like a human, don't go thinking I am one. When you get to it, aren't servants supposed to be tools for this kind of thing? I'll be back in a moment. You have not answered my question. I asked you, do you enjoy killing people? I glare at the servant. Holding the wrapped dagger, the servant... Not one bit. First off, if I kill them, I miss out on a lot of fun I could be having with them. He directed a repugnant laugh as if he wanted me to share in his amusement. You bastard. How dare you call yourself a heroic spirit. I can't restrain myself. It's strange. I've seen people like him countless times, yet without any reason I feel disgusted at this man's way of life. It somehow feels as if this man al alone must not be forgiven. <laughs> You've, we've come so disappointed. Eh. Well, no, I had to take uh, groceries out of the car. That's why I was gone. I could say the same for you, lady. If you don't like killing, you shouldn't have become a master. Seriously, it's a turn-off. Man, what a waste of a good show. And I was so hoping it would cheer you up, too. I see. I apologize, but I cannot ever meet your expectations on that front. I'm now convinced, uh... I'm now convinced. We are not going to get along with each other. You are the type of person I hate the most. I turn my hostility towards my own servant. I direct hatred similar to annoyance at the person I have to gain trust from first. I'm not acting right. The immaturity of showing my feelings and hating someone should have been discarded long ago. Hey. That's fine. Basically, I hate all things too. It pissed me off if you let your guard down, so it suits me fine. <laughs> I think you can call this one wet. This one wet. This one way of getting along. The servant shows no signs of caring. I hate him, and he doesn't think anything of me. So there will be no cause for friction, even if we despise each other, as we have no plans to bond. You know, though, I kind of like your type. Except, he just said something odd. Why? You said you hate everything. As your master, I know what kind of servant you are. Your course of action is not that of someone who is fond of humans. Well, for now, I'll just say you're my type of woman. I don't like you, but I got some affection for you. The reason is because I am a woman. Not a woman. My type of woman. They're the kind that excites me. You've got the kind of body I like, but parts of you, like the elite schoolgirl or the one that tries to go by society's norms, is just painful to look at. You understand me? This here was just me carrying out my one function like it's my job. But you're turning me on enough to make me want to find a real reason to kill you. 
The shadow laughs. Intent flows in through our connected path, so dense I can physically feel it. This servant isn't lying. He hates all things. By nature, he sees everything as an object to kill, without reason or reward. There can be no other explanation. Not for this pure hatred that can turn into a curse without having to use the incendiary device of magic just by existing. But that leaves me with questions. For someone with as much bloodlust as him to not kill me earlier doesn't make any sense. I know, right? FGO doesn't. About what you said earlier, you said that you would kill me first, but restrained yourself. How did you hold back your lust for me without being under the influence of a command spell? Oh. Yeah, that's because you're my master. I just made this rule that you're not human. To get right down to it, you just became the only living thing I don't feel like killing. On the outside, you might be a woman. On the inside, not human at all. You've been categorized outside of my playing range. That was direct. For some reason, I find his answer incredibly hurtful. You are not going to treat me as a human being? I've heard people say that say before that I'm boring or that I'm not charming, but this has to be the first time I wasn't treated like a woman. No, he said as a human being, but this is how it sounded to me. Oh, you can't trust me? This is the best I'm gonna offer. The first and last exception I'm ever gonna make, you know? Shit, you're pissing me off. I'm being serious here. Okay, okay. I get it. You won't believe it without something to show for it. Alright, fine. If I give you this, will you trust me? So he interpreted my silence as suspicion. He tears out a page of a notepad from the blood-soaked desk and writes something on it. There you go. Don't give it to anybody else. Certificate of Exemption from Murder. Valid until the end of Holy Grail War. In well-written Japanese. What is this? What do you mean, what? This is proof that you're not a person. With this, anybody can tell that I'm not into you. Good for you, he says, pushing the piece of paper into my hands. Yes, my judgment was correct. This servant and I are hopelessly doomed to not get along. We cannot afford to stay at the murder scene forever. Hurriedly, we leave the residents behind. I have my complaints with my servant acting without my permission, but it is already too late. By continuing to argue with him, the only thing that would result is further mistrust. However, there is one thing I feel that is strange about him. I cannot trust this servant. Masters and servants are linked. Because of that, I can feel that he is fundamentally the kind that enjoys murder and completely kills his opponent ruthlessly, no matter who or what. He is completely opposite. I complete my missions without leaving room for my personal fe- Or he is my complete opposite. Without leaving room for personal feelings. However, this servant does so only with personal feelings. He operates only on the emotion of wanting to kill people. But despite that... What? Didn't you say you want to leave? Oh, I get it. You're planning on ambushing the other masters dumb enough to investigate this mess, right? A Megas wouldn't fall for a trap as obvious as that. I told you that combat is reserved for the second stage. We will proceed with information gathering, remember? Nah, I'm betting there'll be a stupid rookie around. Like the kind that goes on night beat patrols every night and drops dead. He wouldn't figure out that going around doing his homework would just get him wasted by the other masters. Terminally ill with goodness, ain't he? I feel like he may be specifically targeting someone. I ignore my servant's chatter and walk ahead. And yet, despite all of his negative points, I don't feel this servant is unpleasant. He is the kind of human being that I despise the most. I cannot tolerate him on any level. So why is it that I cannot completely hate him? I close my eyes and focus on our link. In exchange for the flowing magical energy, sometimes I feel something very refreshing. A feeling of homesickness rubbing against the heart. A prayer resemb resembling longing. How hollow. That void tells me something. I don't understand the clear reason why. 
but it tells me the servant will never betray me. It tells me that he will lend me his chaotic will to grant my wish.